Rockets, Kobe, did, did he play in the league? Oh, yes, right. 18-time All-Star, five-time <laughs> champ, two-time Finals MVP. Jimmy Walker was the number one pick, two-time All-Star. You might know his son, Jalen Rose, a member of Michigan's legendary Fab Five, scored more than 13,000 points, and, of course, our good friend and coworker here at ESPN. There was Del Curry finishing in the top 10 in three-point percentage seven times. He's got two sons in the league, Seth and Steph. Steph, of course, finishing top 10 in three-point percentages eight times. He's also won a couple rings there and mm -hmm. two MVPs, plus many, many more. Clay and Michael, the Berries, Bill and Luke Walton, the Bookers, the Hardaways. I could go on and on. Janae, you are part of an athletic family. You and your sister both play in the W. So are expectations different when you know you've got that lineage to uphold and the pressure and everyone's comparing you? You know, I don't have kids yet, hopefully in the <laughs> future, not so distant future, but it's funny with my younger sisters who also play at Rice University, I feel like a parent out there. Like, I'm stressed, I'm bugging, I'm jumping out of my seat. It's just so much more stressful. And Neck and I always joke, Neck and my teammate and sister, um, that it's so much easier playing with each other because we can yeah. control the outcome. But you do deal with pressures, you know, as family. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys are rolling this B-roll, <laughs> my sister and I. But you know, there's two different types of pressure. Our parents did not play sports, right? Um, when you have a, a father like LeBron, and LeBron is a, a great example, there's so much pressure for LeBron because he was that guy, the chosen one at 14, right? right. Um, where everyone was saying he's not only gonna transform the life of his family, his community, the state, dubbing him possibly like the next greatest player of all time. That is a lot of pressure. Now for the next generation, for the Bronies or the Bryce or even the Zuries, right? It's a different pressure. It's social media, it's technology. Mm -hmm. Bronny grew up in the time where there's overtime, there's yep. house of highlights. There's always a camera scrutinizing every move of his. Not so much the case with LeBron. I know that we saw him at age 14 yeah, in a different but... way, but these guys also have their own forms of pressure. But what I really love is how they coexist, right? Like one of my favorite moments before D-Wade retired was when Zaire sort of ran up on him after yeah. he had a shot. And it's like, wow, like they're embracing their parents' current state. Um, even though D-Wade is retired now, like now he is at the games holding it down for LeBron James while LeBron is dominating the league. Like everything comes full circle. It's tough to deal with pressure when you're in the family, but you realize your number one thing is your support system, mm -hmm. and they've been through it all. Yeah, I mean, this is like being a Kennedy. Right. Right, right. I mean, and, and, we, and I say royalty, I mean, the guy's nickname is King James, yes. right? And, and, and no disrespect to any of the other players, uh, who NBA alums who were on that list. But this is the first time I can remember the progeny of a truly generational superstar. I mean, you mentioned it. One of LeBron's first public comments was, hey, I'm just waiting around for my son to make yeah. it to the NBA. So, you know, perhaps we can play against each other or together. And I just cannot imagine the level of pressure right. that Bronny endures. And uh, I mean, the fact that he's well adjusted is, is in and of itself, given what celebrity culture and all that social media and who LeBron is culturally is, is pretty astounding. I mean, it's interesting how they have really tried to, as a family, take some of that pressure off. You hear what they're saying now. It's been really a 180 degree change. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah. We just want him to be a good kid, that kind of thing. They're sending him to a school in Sierra Canyon that has a lot of celebrity kids. First of all, it has a lot of basketball celebrity kids. Our coworker, Scotty Pippen, who, you know, Mr. Six Rings, his son went to Sierra Canyon and graduated there from there last year. Kenya Martin's kid. I could go on and on. So that's a program that's used to that kind of stuff. It's also a school. I mean, the card. Dashian kids go. I mean, it's like, Can you imagine, like parent true. teacher conferences at this school. At this school, school? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, <laughs> where all of that, and in a way, it's, it's, it's a way to make a kid who, if you are LeBron James' son, not that all of that not feel as big a deal. The other difference, I think, when people talk about the attention on this kid as, say, compared to the attention on LeBron or some of the other big high school prodigies that we've seen in the past, one of the things that feels, frankly, uncomfortable if you're some of us in the media or watching these games is you see all of this on the kid and you realize this kid has on his shoulders his entire family, his entire community, his entire school and his teachers, sometimes coming from an area where there isn't much else going on or isn't much else around and he's carrying everything everyone's hopes and dreams and financial security along with him and it's all weighing on him. LeBron James Jr. is not carrying any of that, right? And I do think it's different. I do think if you are going out there and you don't know that, hey, if I do well, my mom could get a house, right? Or my whole family's life could change versus that's not what's right. going on it's here. It's material pressure versus reputational pressure. Right? Yeah. I, I right. do like, think it's a different kind of thing when we say, oh God, it's so much so fast for a kid. It, it's, it is. 
definitely is. It's just different. And, and I think that's an important difference to remember when we're talking about all of this stuff. It is interesting. We've had some great, great kids of kids. We've got guys who are the third, right, making it in the LeBron. We've been talking about this in the days leading up to this. And I know you were looking forward to it all week. But what was it like? walking in the building, this place went crazy, and you realized I'm actually here for the first time getting to watch my son play. I think I'm a, I was a lot more nervous than my than my son, you know, coming in here and, uh, you know, just being such a surreal moment, you know, for myself, for our family, for Bronny himself. Um, it's pretty cool. And it's not just that you're getting to see him play for the first time. He is playing, of course, against your old high school. And you've stayed so connected to St. V's. You refurbished their gym. It's now named after you. You provided them with these arenas, that, with these uniforms that they're wearing against your son tonight. Is it strange cheering against them? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I told my wife I, I needed to do uh, you know, what Steph Curry's mom always do and get to have St. Vincent St. Mary and have uh, Sierra Can jersey for this game. Uh, but, you know, my, my heart is always going to be with St. V. Um, Coach Drew is like a father to me, a father figure. He taught me so much, not only about the game of basketball, but about life and what it means to be a young man off the floor. So I'm always going to be indebted with St. V and Coach Drew. And, uh, you know, it's just like I said, it's like full circle that I'm here in my home state. My son is here with his high school playing my alma mater. And all my guys from my high school, uh, the Fat Five, is here tonight as well. So it's just, it's crazy. You kept using words the last couple of days like surreal, emotional, and the fact that you are here with your guys. You had dinner before this game with all your old teammates. It's like a homecoming. It is a homecoming. You know, we don't uh, get to spend as much time as we would like to, but uh, anytime we get back together, we pick it off right where we left off. So, you know, to have my guys here, to see Coach Drew, uh, to see, you know, St. Vincent, St. Mary, and, and the fans here, and then to see Sierra Kane and my son, it's just, I, I don't know. It, it's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's how cool it is. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Now, I mentioned this is the first game you've gotten to see in person. I've seen you after games. You've got the phone out. You've got the iPad out. You're streaming. You've got your feet in a bucket of ice, and you're still watching your son. I've heard that you scream on the team plane, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's watching another game of his kid. How different is it getting to actually be here? And now you are still yelling, but he can hear you this time. No, he can't hear me. Uh, hopefully I'm not too, uh, too loud, and I'm distracting him from what the main thing is, and that's just trying to win. So... Uh, but I, I'm, I'm just so proud of, you know, not only Bronny, but Bryce and Zuri, my three kids. We just try to raise them the right way to be, you know, like I said, great in the community, be great to their teammates or classmates or whatever the case may be. And, you know, represent the James name, you know, with the utmost respect, you know, to everybody. So, you know, like I said, it's an honor for us to even be here. It's an honor for myself uh, to have my family here and, and for us to be watching such a beautiful game. But people who are watching you on the broadcast, they're seeing what people who have seen you when your son plays AAU already know, which is your dad. You do all the sports dad things. You yell, you you encourage, you do all of those things. Um, do you ever feel self-conscious that because you know you're LeBron James getting up and yelling and doing all the regular dad stuff? Uh, absolutely not. Um, you know, because I, you know, I'm, it's all about support for me, and it's all about the love of the game, too. You know, without the game of basketball, I wouldn't be here, obviously. My son wouldn't be here. Our family in this position, the game has given, given me so much. I feel like it's my... Uh, obligation and my duty to give the game back with all the energy and all the excitement and you know giving my son pointers and him giving me inspiration he's motivating me tonight so you know watching him tonight I can't wait to go and play tomorrow I am gonna tell on you to America though because I know that you have had to apologize to your mother since you started being courtside at your son's games would you like to tell people why you've had to apologize to Gloria yeah I had to apologize to my mom because when I was growing up playing AAU ball my mom used to be one of the loudest people in the stands I'm talking about going crazy at my opponents, going crazy at the referees, going crazy at my own coach and teammates. And um, I used to be like, Mom, you got to sit down. What are you doing, Mom? Like, you, you're embarrassing me. It's Mom, I'm looking to you right now. My mom's actually here. So, yeah, I've told her to her face, I apologize. I know exactly how, how it feels to be a parent, uh, you know, watching your kid play. So, yeah, I've apologized. And you know how your son feels, too, being the center of attention. And he's just a freshman. He's re earned raves from his teammates and coaches about how he plays his role. He's a team first player, looks to make the pass, looks to make the right play. But you know, as a parent, how much attention is on him. What have you told him about handling and balancing being LeBron James Jr., but also being a kid? No, nah, I mean, we don't even talk about, you know, what it means to be LeBron James Jr. Uh, from early on, we've been calling him Bronny for a long time. Obviously, we know what that's short for, but... He's his own identity. Same with Bryce, same with Zuri. Um, it's our job in the household to prepare them for life and prepare them for when they walk outside our door to know what's coming or try to be prepared for. 
Uh, when he's playing the game of basketball, all we care about is how, you know, I'll tell him every time before we go out and play, play hard, have fun, be a great teammate, and everything else take care of itself, you know. So um, what we're most, imp what we're most uh, proud about is how, you know, when parents come up to us and say how well mannered and how well spoken our kids are that that makes us um you know ecstatic and they say miss brownie is so you know he's so nice to my, my my kid our kids and bryce is so nice to our kids and zuri she's so great that's what makes us proud more than anything the basketball court for brownie and bryce the gymnastics for zuri that's extra credit you know for us but you know it's definitely fun along the way what are the things at this point in his high career because he's now in high school it's much more big time um what does he ask you about the most what kind of advice does he seek from you um, you know what? If you got a teenage kid, they really don't ask for much. They don't really say much. You know, you got to really, you got to take it to them at this point. You know, he, he's usually, you know, back home playing Fortnite, uh, listening to music, you know, talking to his friends. Uh, so I just try to drop, uh, drop a few gems on them, um, you know, on a weekly basis, either if I'm at home or if I'm on the road. Uh, just continue to let them know how much, how, how proud I am of him. Uh, make sure that he always look out for his little brother and his little sister because they're looking up to him. And uh, that's what's most important. So, but you know, you gotta you gotta go to them. In their teenage years, I figured out you gotta go to them if you want to give them some knowledge. You know, there's kids all over America thinking, well, if LeBron James was my dad, I'd be asking him basketball advice <laughs> every day. But it doesn't work like that when it's your.